Hey everyone, it's Spencer here and welcome back to the Niche Pursuits podcast. What you're about to hear is an interview with Jeff Coyle from marketmuse.com. Now, Jeff and I have known each other for a little bit now and uh, we actually had the opportunity to go to a small mastermind in Mexico and we talk about that just a little bit here in the beginning. But Jeff is somebody that has been involved in the SEO industry for like over 20 years. I mean, we're talking about the early days of the internet and so he has a ton of expertise and really is super knowledgeable about content marketing. And so we talk about artificial intelligence as it relates to content. Uh, if you are a listener of the podcast, you know that I talked a little bit about GPT-3 and robots that are writing articles. And in fact, Market Muse has something called First Draft that uses artificial intelligence and natural language processing to help draft content. But what it does is it actually perhaps goes a step further than GPT-3 goes in that it's for a very specific purpose. It's for content marketers. And so Jeff and I talk about how artificial intelligence can work for content marketers and specifically how it will help them optimize, provide content depth, and do so much more. And so we talk about that content marketing and what Market Muse does and what Jeff has planned for the future as well in this interview. So I hope that you enjoy listening to Jeff Coyle from marketmuse.com. Hey, Jeff, welcome to the Niche Pursuits podcast. Hey, Spencer. Thanks for having me. It's good to see you. Yep. So first question, hardest one you're going to get, where in the world did you learn to play ping pong? Oh, geez. That's a great question. Wow. Yeah. We've, we've had some matches in our, in our days. We did. Um, I, I played uh, with a person who ended up being extremely competitive at the national level when I was young. And so played when I was young a lot. Yeah. And, um, and I have an interesting story. If you want a two second ping pong story. Absolutely. Oh man, I gotta go. I can't tell the one because it gets into his, his life, but I will tell you, I, uh, I had a paddle shift in my first year in college, right? That was I, you know, you're a freshman nerd and, and playing, playing ping pong. I had a paddle shift and you got it to the, the centralized mailbox, right? And it was from paddle palace, real place, right? The woman who gave me that thing, I think she thought I was into some crazy stuff. And the look on her face, the woman in the mail office at Georgia Tech uh, office, when she handed me that paddle pilot's box was classic. So, yeah, I remember uh, starting to explain myself, but then I just grabbed it and ran out of it. <laughs> just get out of there with your paddle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. No, no, that's funny. I bring that up because we played some ping pong. We were in Mexico as yeah. part of a mastermind with uh, Rhodium, uh, the mm -hmm. Rhodium group. And, you know, you can tell within about 10 seconds if somebody knows how to play, play ping pong. So Jeff comes out holding it all weird, you know, upside down, like, and so anyways, oh, Jeff, that, was a good, that was a good weekend. That was a good that weekend. Was, that, trip that, was, that trip was money. So, yeah, yeah. I, I think I may have beat you one game. I'm not sure. Oh, you did. Oh, no, 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 no. By the by the end of the... Uh, I think I just... Got you yeah, got your groove. Back. I got my groove, maybe got lucky, but uh, I'll take it. So <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, so Jeff, let's give people a little bit of an introduction on who you are, um, You know what your background is. You've got a really extensive background before Market Muse, which we'll dive into, uh, but maybe just give uh, people a brief professional background, who you are, what you've done as it relates to SEO and content marketing and some of that expertise you have. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, whether good or bad, I've been doing search content strategy, lead gen, some flavor of conversion rate optimization for about 21 years. Uh, when I went to college, as I mentioned, at Georgia Tech uh, for usability theory, computer science, um, I was doing some also some search engine design, but like intranet search like word parsing yeah. and stuff um and when i got out of school i actually was my junior year of college i started as an intern with a company called knowledge storm and so knowledge storm was a 
uh, we were selling leads to software companies before there was content marketing. You know, it was we were trying to convince big B two B technology companies to have content. And when I say content, to actually get their white papers out there, the ones that had historically been research documents or scholarly references, brochureware. I mean, these were companies who were you know you know big multinational businesses that had you know full page websites at the time. Um, and so that went from 20 to 2007. And in my first, you know, four months there, I realized that the place where we were getting traffic was, you know, these, these web properties and that I knew how to figure those things out. So the first, um, you know, the first means of us generating leads was through SEO. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we then grew that into a massive network of hundreds of websites, uh, generating, you know, thousands and thousands of leads per day, um, uh, to these companies, we had a great email marketing practice. We had early manual conversion rate optimization practice. Um, we were acquired by at the time, our biggest competitor, uh, tech target in 2007, where I brought my whole team, AB multivariate testers, SEO, technical SEO, um, paid uh, that whole group to Tech Target. Um, and they had previously not really, they had a huge network just naturally from great writing and wonderful editorial. So we brought kind of a power pack of, of, of things that we could do, lead gen, and I was a product manager as well for all of our lead products. Um, and it, ended up becoming us bringing a practice and revving them up. So I spent almost eight years there. We had about you know, 30 people on our team when I finally left to go work at a, a private equity firm um, and consult. Uh, right around that time is when Aki, my co-founder, and I started Market News. And you know, the, at Tech Target, it was about you know, every possible aspect, working with editorial teams, working with product teams, lead gen teams, and building products around that. And what really the biggest pain point was, how do you get the editorial team, the content team, the SEO team, the AB multivariate team to get along and also to be aligned on what data they're using to make decisions on what to create and what to optimize. So we had created all these manual processes about what to do. Um, and the first person who I met that was starting to innovate on that front with technology was then, you know, was my co-founder, Aki, uh, who created the first technology on, underneath uh, Market News. Um, and it immediately was successful. Really was the thing that made the editorial leader, the subject matter expert, and the SEO finally, like, get on the same page. Like, expertise in content matters. You have to write great content. Um, you have to tell the story that you know your stuff. And if you're missing things in your content that an, that an expert would naturally talk about, that an expert would cover. If they were just really good at it, you know, you're done. I mean, you know, it, it, you know, it's like a, uh, you know, uh, some, you, you, you don't know it unless you know it. And if you don't, and you're writing about it, you're in trouble in the long haul. Right. You you might be able to hack it for a little bit, but you're gonna take a you're gonna take a beating. And so we built we build solutions at Market Muse that really are focused on solving that challenge. What should I create now? What should I update? What needs to be improved? What's not competitive? What's competitive? What can I win for? Uh, how much investment do I need on this topic? And anything in between. So yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's give people a time frame. When did you start Market Muse? Um, um, the earliest version there. So yeah. So Aki uh, was working on this kind of in his uh, you know spare time as like a bit of a science project uh, as far back as you know, 23, 2013, uh, 2014. Um, I in 2014-15, while still at um, Tech Target, got acquainted with Aki. In early phase, they didn't really have any customers, a few here and there, early evangelists. Um, and then I became effectively one of the first clients at a reasonable scale. I mean, at the time we were managing hundreds of websites. Okay. Um, and when I left and Aki had heard about me leaving, he said, wow, we're going to really start to take this to market. You know these workflows. Like, will you join me as a co-founder and, and take this to market? 
Um, so that was roughly five years ago this week. Okay. Um, and now we're, you know, 50 people, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of customers and, you know, just continue to stretch the market um, on what it means to really get stuff done with content. You know? so. Yeah. And so um, you touched on a little bit. I just wanted to get a sense of sort of the success of Market Muse, right? Mm-hmm. Kind of roughly, it's been five years uh, that you've been with Market Muse. Yep. Um, any success metrics you're willing to share for how well Market Muse is doing? You say you've got 50 employees, yeah. um, so obviously you're supporting that. But but what else can you give us an idea of the success there? Uh, you know, a couple of successes I'll I'll, I'll talk about it are relate to you know how much interest we're able to drive. I'm really proud of our content team. Um, we're able to generate so much demand. Because it's something that everybody wants, you know. It is this thing that, you know, I, I'm always doubting whether I'm creating the right content. I'm always doubting the, and so I think our messaging around that has, you know, really, really improved to focus on the things that everyone has challenges with. But also, it's a solution for we have solutions for enterprise, so you know, large mm-hmm. publishers, large B two B technology companies. Um, while I can't get into you know, explicit, um, you know, customers or revenue or those types of things. Right. What I can say is that the thing I'm most proud of, I guess, from the team is that we, we eat our own dog food. I mean, we use market music and we're successful with it. I mean, and that's really the special thing for me because it's, you know, that oozes confidence in the offering. The, for the longest time, this market market muse was kind of a um, what did someone say? It was a a gym membership for the most elite SEO teams. You know, it was super like don't tell your friends about it. Right. Um, it's the secret weapon for agencies like that they all like like don't tell each other about. Um, <laughs> but now those workflows have become mature, right? People know they need great content. People know they have to be thinking about it. So I'd say the biggest business win is through the, the through the maturity of this market, the content strategy, content intelligence, and content optimization market. We've been there since the first. We were the first in this market doing it the right way. And now we're the most mature org offering things for the individual solopreneur all the way up to the biggest three letter words, three letter acronyms that you all know. Um, right. And that to me is success because so we've shown that these workflows get it done for the best and the best. And also the person who is their first day. Yeah. So just to give a very, I mean, we've touched, you've touched on a lot of points, what Market Muse does, but maybe let's give a succinct, like two minute, here's what Market Muse does and how it helps you. And if you want to use an example, you know, and for listeners, I'm helping to make it concrete for them. You know, if you were to take (laughs) my site, you know, like I have a a niche site called ownthyard.com that's been my public uh, project. I was looking at that yesterday. Oh, were you? Okay. I was, yeah. I really was. Very good. You you linked to it somewhere. I was literally looking at that yesterday. Perfect. So you know what I'm talking about, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a niche site that I've built and kind of shared what I've done. Um, Let's say I wanted to increase the SEO traffic. I've got lots of content already there, um, but I want to, you know, make it do better. Uh, How do I use Market Muse to make it get more SEO traffic. Absolutely. So Market Muse is, you know, the elevator pitch on Market Muse is it's a content intelligence platform that sets the standard for content quality. Okay. That's the key. Okay. It tells the story about what it means to be an expert in, gosh, I hope I went to to the right site, in outdoor games one might play in a tailgate or in a beer garden or in something like that. You got it. But it was the right site. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So basically it's saying it tells you at the site level or the strategic level, where are you strong? Where are you weak? Where do you have gaps? Where are there opportunities? Where should you lean into? You've got momentum. Where, if you, you know, desire it, where do you have gaps? Where do you have blind spots? At the the site level or the network level? 
Um, so we give insights as to how hard it's going to be for you to perform for a topic and how much investment is needed in content creation or updates. Mm-hmm. As, uh, how, how much effort you're going to need to put in to, to make it what happen. To, to, to guide the content planning dynamics that are most common. So the most common content planning dynamics, if you imagine a four square, quick wins, what do I do today that's gonna have the biggest impact? Create or optimize, but also business goals. I really think Patank is gonna be big um, in on my site and how do I own Patank, right? I hope I'm saying that right, I think I am. Uh, yeah. So, uh, which is a bocce-like game played in France with metal balls in case anyone doesn't know. Uh, so the, um, you might say, I want to own that. What content do I need to create? What updates do I need to make to my bocce area? What updates do I need to make to, these, to make me more thought of a thought leader on the time? Right. right. Yep. Do I need to cover other French games as well? Do I need to cover wool? Do I need to cover, oh man, I'm going to drop it. There's a couple other ones I, I, off the top of my head. Sorry. Yeah, um, we're good. Yeah, so we're good. So, and then what if there's competitive pressure? So, Bocce sets are us. Gosh, just got bought by Red Ventures. They're coming at us, right? <laughs> we're going to start writing like 600 articles a day. Um, what do I do to respond to that threat? Or, which is very common in niche sites, I write 80 articles and a few of them get 90% of my traffic. I'm scared crapless about that. I don't really know what to do. I don't know why they were successful. I'm scared to touch them. That happens to so many people, right? right? Yeah. And so what do I do? I like to think about it. I call that the arm. You've got this, you've got this hand with no arm. How do I support the hand that's floating in space, generating 80% of my affiliate revenue? Um, how do I surround that with content clusters uh, to win? And then the last thing is maybe you're just an editorial shop, right? Or you're a marketing services or you've got an editorial calendar. Stuff you got to write. Orders you got to take. How do we put our best foot forward on those efforts. So quick wins, business goals, risks, and um, you know, org gotta do it, the editorial calendars, that makes up 95% of why people write or why people upload content. We guide any one of those things. There's other unique stuff, local optimization, ABM, um, m- migration plans. So what content do we need to create and update as to get the best bang for our buck or for risk reduction around a migration. We inform all of those, but that's, mm-hmm. those are edge cases. Um, and, and so like, that's what Mark Muse is providing at the site operator level. And then we also deliver content briefs at scale for those writers, creating a single source of truth for your writers. So they know whether they're SEO champions or not, they know if they deliver the content that meets those specs, they have the best chance to be successful. Uh, and we deliver, we have teams that get a thousand briefs a month, you know, wow. or more. Uh, and then we have a suite of applications that do it. Those are for your do it yourselfers. You know, that's the, that's the person who just wants to figure out how to update this page. Right. Or do competitive research on that page. Or what are the best questions I should answer about this topic? You know, so we've got these do it yourselfer workflows for the SEO expert. We've also got more of that high level strategic thinking business intelligence, content intelligence uh, concepts. So no matter where you're at, we're filling in gaps in your content workflow. Right. And so um, for, for people listening, I mean, it, it, it does a ton. It's a super smart tool. And we're going to talk about some how smart it is here in just a second. But just to drive home that point of, you know, for the do it yourself or, you know, or somebody that's building a niche site, like it gives you very concrete, you know, what words and phrases should you be using to update your content? What new new topics should you be targeting? How long should those articles be? You know, it gives you very actionable, like you use the tool and it essentially tells you what you should be writing your article about, what headings it should have, what, you know, everything that you would need to really provide an in-depth piece of content, right? Yeah, I mean, some, some slogans that we kicked out are let your writers write. Let your experts be experts. You know, so much of what SEO does is try to push square pegs into round holes uh-huh. with great writers, making them have to be keyword research people or 
awesome subject matter experts, making them have to use words and be keyword research people. You know, it's let them do let them do the things that they're great at. Spend more time being creative. Let's spend more time on production value and make sure we know we have objective measures of quality. So if they put together a beautiful creative creative writing narrative and it has great production value, but they didn't have a brief, they might have to submit it to an SEO edit. Well, blank you, I'm the expert, right? So now I have a standard source of truth. I, I meet those guidelines in my narrative. I'm going to hand you this draft and you're going to go high five. They yep. don't have to go through that. Yep. And that's so painful. We interview writers all the time. That SEO edit, it's soul sucking, soul sucking. And it's like, we're trying to take that out. Like, what if you never had to spit something back or make somebody feel bad, right? With some sort of subjective perspective, right? Uh, uh, on this content. So we were doing a lot of things for those types of, but the greatest part is the outcomes are there. Right. You know, the wins are there. You create more content. You're more efficient with the content you're creating. When you update content, you know why. Right. You know, we, you and I are probably the two people in this world that think the most, maybe Kevin Indig, who think the most critically about internal linking and its impacts. I mean, we give insights on internal linking yeah. from a semantic relatedness perspective. So, I mean, if you're doing those three things right, you're not writing content and hitting publish and hoping that it does well. You know it's going to do well, or at least you know the percentage of it it's going to do well. You know, right, so. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's um, move a little bit more into artificial intelligence and what you guys are doing there. Um, you know, people that are listening to the podcast know that I've been talking about this a little bit uh, recently, and part of that is because some of the PR that you know another company has gotten this GPT three. Right. Uh, you hear about this. There was an article in The Guardian and it's been mentioned other places that, you know, robots are taking over. Right. Robots are now writing complete articles that sound like humans and GPT-3 has the technology. Right. They're the greatest thing since sliced bread uh, is kind of what I'm hearing. And then and then I see this article on Market Muse that kind of compares what they are doing compared to GPT-3. And boy, it kind of sounds like Market Muse might even be better. So uh, maybe you can dive into that. Like, what is Market Muse doing with uh, artificial intelligence, and and kind of how does that compare to GPT three? No, and then, yeah, you did that right. The only part is, yes, it is, but it's better for us. It's better for content marketers. Got it. Uh, it's better for strategic content people. It's better for content strategists and editorial people. Um. You know, there's natural language processing. The industry has changed so dramatically in the last, you know, two years that it's 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 mind numbing. Uh, not to get into too much detail, but we have our own data science lab uh, based in Montreal, the M4 lab, uh, where we're focused on innovations in natural language processing, natural language generation, um, and we always have been. Right? We've been our original technology is a branch of artificial intelligence called topic modeling. Um, you know, and machine learning to train models to tell the story of what it means to be an expert, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and we built the briefs. We've automated the generation of content outlines with our content briefs, right? Um, and so we've always sought out the white whale of natural language generation, right? Um, but we have very strong desire to do that right for content marketers. Right. And to make sure that it's focused on expertise and workflows that work. It's not some magician trick that isn't implementable. Um, the goals and the workflows are so tuned into your brain. You don't even realize some of these pains. But I really, really love when Washington Post, for example, came out a couple of years ago with Heliograph. It was one of the first publicly known NLG platform, natural language generation platforms. Um, and the two use cases I really connected with that made us really focus on this was when he said, um, I was at a, a conference in, in Vegas, actually, at ICC. Now it's content tech. Um, and the main scientist said, we used to be able to cover, and I forget the number, 18% of the elections nationwide. Well, with Heliograph, we cover them all. That's good wow. for everybody. Yeah. Right? 
We used to cover 8% of the Olympic games. Now we cover them all, right? And we have to program exceptions in. We have to program things in that like tell you that judo gets two bronze medals. You know what I did that day? I went and looked it up in Market News and it told me that judo requires two bronze medals. And I said, oh crap, we can build briefs already at right. scale. Well, why aren't we writing? And so the unique value we have is we know what it means to be an expert. We can build a brief that you can validate. You know the article that you're asking for. And we can start to build drafts. And so Market News is the only model that allows you to tune against a set of guidelines that you state. And it's so high quality, you can train it on any set of specific data and also train it on your site to write like you. So it writes like you, it's completely unique content. No possibility for plagiarism or anything like that. And it meets the standards of the brief. It's a first draft, it still needs to be edited, but our models blow the doors off of generalist models because we're building them specific for you and we're able to do it at scale and super lightweight. So if you imagine, and we can actually do post tuning on these things for any specific set of guidelines that you have. So we can actually set this up to write the next article about AI that Spencer would write. And you validate that brief so you know what you're going to get. So it's highly likely that you're going to go, oh, yeah, that's pretty good. I can spend 40 minutes tuning up this draft and make it good enough to publish, right? Our goal was always to get the, to, we always thought we'd get the editing down to, um, you know, down below an hour and we'd be in good shape, right? And we're roughly there with first draft. We also offer, offer an offering called final draft, which our team acts as that editor for you. So you can buy the first drafts at scale or wait a little bit longer and you can get final drafts, right? Um, and GPT-3 is being sold as this thing that you know AI is taking over, but it has so much limitation. It has so many limitations. It's beautiful. It's massive. It's got so much that it can do. It's, it's truly innovative. It, the number of parameters, it, I mean, it does a lot, but does it write highly composed narratives that meet a set of guidelines that pass muster and can be edited neatly into uh, great content that you're confident in? No, it doesn't. Um, and the people who are projecting these things, I mean, famously the Guardian article, that was written out of eight generations pieced together and supplemented by the writer. Okay, did that speed up, did that speed up their journey in writing that article? Um, if it did, great. That's what I care about, right? If it didn't, and it was just to be sensational, okay, so be it. Um, but what I'm what I'm focused on is the is what that writes fluff. Can would you would you publish it? Is it truly a legitimate narrative? Um, or is it just kind of writing stuff that sounds right, sounds reasonable, and thus passes the test of a writer could write this? Well, a writer could write this isn't good enough for right. your site. So that's the trick here. Um, and, and, and that's where I'm like, guys, if what I want our NLG solution, what I want Market News First Draft to do this is where your audience, some of them are going to shake a little bit. Sorry. <laughs> I want the low end of the content market to disappear. I want those one centi, two centi garbage article places to go away because that's not good for anyone. Our mission at Market Muse is to build high quality, con quality content and comprehensive content that tells the story that you're an expert. And this solution into the market raises the bar on meets minimum for content. And that that isn't hype. That's something we can all get behind. No one wants garbage. On, no one wants garbage on the web and bad low quality content. So I guess my striking thing is to say, you know, you're going to have to do some fact check. You're going to have to do some tweaking on content at this point on generate content. How much though do you need to do? Um, and, you know, 
it's getting better and better. But what if you could have an objective measure of quality, an objective measure of comprehensiveness, an objective measure of expertise, an outline that you validated? Oh, maybe the person who knew that makes a better article from day one. That's what market news is. That's why we have an insane, insane competitive advantage on this. And so, yes, is it better? Absolutely better. Um, and, you know, we've already generated hundreds of these in our alpha. Um, and it goes to beta next month. It's going to break the market. That's super exciting uh, <laughs> for content marketers, obviously. So mm -hmm. to, to kind of drive this point home, and I'll just uh, restate a little bit of what you said, you know, with GPT-3, you know, it, it's kind of a good general uh, model of artificial intelligence using natural language processing. And like the example you mentioned, you know, they, it took, they took um, eight tries at writing an article and then they combined it, you know, they cobbled it together, I guess, or I don't know if they used just one or if they cobbled pieces together, uh, the best pieces. I don't know. No, they um, used eight and picked them together, which guess what? I know that story. That's, that's a, work, that's a fine work. I, we did it early on too. I, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, but where market muse, um, steps in is that, like you said, it provides that sort of eject objective metric of what is quality, what, you know, yeah. what is it meeting, you know, when, um, what, what guidelines are you following and et cetera, as you mentioned. Um, so with first draft, again, to have a concrete example here, let's go back to bocce balls, right? If, if I, if I tell first draft, you know, if I have, have got my keyword or my content topic that I want to target, I, yep. you know, plug that into market muse. Is it going to give me an entire article, mm -hmm. um, that that's ready to use? Like what tweaking is needed with, but here's the, the, here's the, here's how it works explicitly. I am in market news. I'm, let's say I'm in market news inventory. I see a low hanging fruit opportunity. You know, what is Patan? We just talked about it, right? Let's just say, or yeah. you know, I'm like, okay, I want that. I order a content brief on that. Depending on the package I'm in, I'm either in self-serve brief generation or done for you brief generation. If it's done for you, you're going to get a brief from our customer success team. If you have to generate yourself, you go in, it gives you the brief walkthrough, how you build a brief. You define a few things, it then generates it for you. Got it. You take the brief. It is an outline. It also says questions that need to be answered, topics that need to be included, um, the general structure of the article. You validate or invalidate. You can add, remove. You validate the length of the article that you we recommend and say, yeah, that's what I want to generate. I then submit that brief to first draft. And today, in a few days, I get my first draft in a Google Doc. In the future, that experience in the next few weeks is going to be a user, user interface, very similar to Market Muse Optimize, where that draft appears inside my workflow and I can tweak it right in there and see exactly what topics are competitive advantages, which ones are supporting my quality and comprehensiveness. So you've used, you've used Optimize and Compete before. Uh -huh. So that draft pops in your, you pop it in there and you're gonna be able to do some other cool stuff, which I, you know, I'll, I'll tease a little bit, but you'll be able to pull in and pull out sections um, if you want. And basically I now I tweak it and it's ready to go. It, it will require editing. Yeah, it is called Market Muse First Draft for a reason. Got it. Um, and, uh, um, and, and so it does. However, we are putting this in place so that you might get inspired in some things that it covers. You might want to add the areas where you are a, a major expert. You might want to add a few paragraphs. You may want to add some imagery, links in a different way, um, using other solutions or just out of your own brain. Um, but your content that we provide will hit Market Muse's target content score. Uh, it will directly connect to the strategy that we recommended. It will um, be potentially much longer form than you would probably buy because mm -hmm. it might be too expensive for you uh, or not. But you can be assured it isn't susceptible to plagiarism, repetition, or degradation. 
other language models degrade or they're based on templates. I'm not saying any of those out loud, but you can go research template-based NLG. Absolutely no templates. We're not saying if you go to Atlanta, you are 1.4 miles from the aquarium. You are also 4.2 miles from the airport. And then calling that NLG. Right. It's a flavor of NLG, um, but it's template based. Can we do that? Heck yeah. Are we coming up with solutions that are going to expand this and make it like a combo of those types of things? For sure. Sure. That's, a, that's in the development pipeline. Um, but what you can be confident in, what you can't with GPT-3 is it, GPT-3 suffers from degradation, repetition, does not check for plagiarism. It's not optimized. It has very shallow topic coverage by default. It's very difficult to train on small corpora or corpus, uh, like your your site, the right like you. Um, it requires programming skills. It's basically a, you know an API. Um, and it's a general purpose language model. You know, I'd say we're a solution, right? It's an API. So it can do a lot. It's amazing. I mean, it is truly one of the most innovative things that anyone's ever done. And I'm, I'm just bluntly saying it is. Um, but we've been thinking about this for four years. We knew the workflow we wanted to build. We have, it's all our own science. It's not us using someone else's API. Right. Um, and I, I always joke, I always laugh when these SaaS providers are really excited about using other people's APIs as like the core of the business. Like, oh, I'm proud of you. You put a UX on someone else's data. No, this is market news data and it is that solution. All right. Are you going to, no one's used to it. This is what I'll tell you. If you're your you're audience, right? Yeah. You're not used to it. <clears throat> Right. It's so new that when you read it, you think your goal is to be the judge of whether it's good or bad. All right. So be ready for this. Right? This was how people felt about SEO reports five or six years ago. You got it and you're like, I don't like this keyword list. You remember, you know, oh, this yeah. keyword list doesn't make sense. And you questioned it. And then solutions like market views came out and you get topically semantic relatedness. And you're like, yes, every one of these topics makes sense for me. You're going to go through the same maturity curve with this workflow. You're going to receive this and you're going to go, that doesn't seem, it doesn't seem perfect or, you know, but it's all part of the, the game. Like you're, you're so not used to having generated content up here. But when we do the Pepsi challenge, you know, uh, I'm aging myself on this, but when you do the Pepsi <laughs> challenge and you put the the generations next to real content or tweet 30 minute edited generations next to content on ones on, and you ask people, we're doing 50 fifties. Wow. And when, yeah, 50 50 on, can they guess? I, we, there's a cool one on our site. If you uh, go to market Muse and look at uh, market Muse um, first draft, versus GPT-3, and then there's another one about comparing natural language generation models that covers GPT-2, and everything. it actually shows, okay. um, you can actually test whether, which one, you, can you guess which one this is? And we actually wrote a, an editor, editorial piece, um, generated one, and then we, with our solution, you can, you can guess which one do you think is uh, real or, or, or uh, not real. Um, and we're going we're gonna to turn that into something too, to see if you can people pass the muster, but the, the goal of it though is, Spencer, that's not what this is for. It's not so that you can judge it and say whether you like it or not. It's right. so it can accelerate your content workflow. You might be able to get more done. You might be able to turn it into something great with only an hour. It may take you three weeks to do it because I want you to be the Olympic report. I, you know you need to write 80 articles on Bocce but that's boring <laughs> and expensive and you're not right. sure if they're going to work. But what if you wrote one editorially and you got 79 drafts? You could just tweak, 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 tweak. Well, in 80 hours, you just did the work that you were never going to do. It's work right. you likely were never going to do. The Washington Post was never going to write articles about every weight class in judo and the right. result of the Olympics. Yeah. They know they should. They know people listening to 
you know, reading their think are going to appreciate that they know who won the two bronze medals in the 76 kilo weight class, right? <laughs> um, but they weren't going to write it. So with Mark and Me's first draft, it's the stuff you know you need to write, but you're not going to get to. Start there. Instead of, does it read well? You know, no, don't. Yeah, that, that's it's just right. one of these things where, where you you could change the narrative of why you're doing this. Focus on content quality, build your pillar piece yourself, and go have a, you know the next 10 pieces drafted. Right. Now maybe you go in, maybe it takes you 20 hours to make those better. But were you actually gonna do that? Were you actually gonna do that work? I'm going to challenge and say most of the time, especially when you're a niche builder, especially when you're a portfolio builder and you've got a lot to do, mm -hmm. um, you're not actually going to execute on that content ever that you want to execute on. I have piles of sites where I wanted to write, you know, 80 articles in 2020 and like I have four. Right. And <laughs> I know exactly the, because I have market views on them, even my, my own stuff. I know exactly the 80 articles I need to write. I'm just like, not, it's, it's just, you know, content operations is tough. And right. what if you can hand someone a brief and a draft and they're a writer? Imagine so how much easier nasty that is. You know, it's going to cost you more uh, perceived. However, you may get more done and be able to put more points on the board uh, because you may feel like you can get good content for four cents a word. So. First of all, super exciting, the developments that are going on, right? Uh, I, I love it. I love following the trend, you know, as I've talked about on the podcast a little bit, but maybe for listeners, it's a little bit scary too, right? Like, yeah. um, I'm just thinking about the, you know, maybe there's people that can't take advantage of this technology, right? Yep. They're, they're just getting started out. It's just them. They're literally a blogger, right? Yep. Like, are, are they going to get left behind? Right. Or is, is this AI, you know, assisted um, content can it kind of leave them in the dust? You know, I, I don't think so. I think it's an amplifier. Um, and it's one of the other reasons why market Muse is going to continue to push for lower priced offerings. Historically, we've been very much focused on mid market, small enterprise and enterprise. Mm -hmm. um, however, in the end of last year, we launched a $500 a month offering called Market Muse Pro. Um, and in the next three weeks, uh, spoiler alert, we are launching two more offerings at much, much more significantly lower price points. Awesome. Uh, so we will have a two digit per month offering for the first time. And wow, cool. Market, Muse, Market Muse land. Um, can, can you tell is, us what's going to be involved with that lower yeah. end plan? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Market Muse Optimize, which is our research uh, competition and then optimize workflows, uh, are just going to be available for a low price point. I don't want to I don't want to sell it explicitly, but there are going to be specific, fine. those do it yourself use cases uh, that we talked about. That's for the person you're talking about. I'm just getting started. I know I need great content. Um, I'm only publishing 10 articles or less a month. Um, I don't have a massive budget. I've got Ocrest, so I've got SEMrush. I do know I need more. This is for them. I got a slightly larger team. I'm putting out a few more articles. I do need that strategic component, um, but I'm not a you know huge business. Well, that's right. gonna be, there's going to be another offering for that. And then I you know I've got a two person team. I need briefs. I'm you know I'm working at a, a small startup. Uh, I've got a portfolio of sites. That's when you're going to start getting into uh, back into our larger offerings. Um, and so, if you were working at a you know a, a B2B tech company with 50 employees, you know, not a fit for this smaller offering. Unless you just wanted to, unless you wanted to use it on maybe your side, your side site and see if it worked, and then sell it internally. Right. Right. Uh, totally cool with that. Um, but yeah, that's all happening. Um, but yeah, are you going to be left behind? No. The only person getting left behind here are people creating really bad content. And, I, 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 and I'm, I'm ultra confident in that. And here's why. It's probably getting me in trouble. But, <laughs> um, you know, you listen this far. Look, look what these content networks, how they're evolving, right? 
go go and look at all the networks, the publicly, you know, the easily accessible networks, and go find how much their how much effort's going they're going into the super super low end low quality content. They're not. They're all focused on high quality. They're all focused on managed services. They're all focused on content workflows and operations because that's the stuff content market is maturing. That's the stuff are the real pain points. Getting mass volumes of low quality content produced, it's just not a thing anymore. Right. It's not a thing. Yep. That's that's the people getting left behind. It's not the person who wants to create their first niche site to be an Amazon affiliate. No. Right. That's you're the person who can kill the market. You can you can beat up a slow dinosaur in your space with solutions like this, um, with competitive analysis opportunity where you say, oh, wow, this stroller website, you know, this person on the stroller website hasn't published an article in six months. I see an opportunity here. Market Muse is telling me I need to write 130 articles. So how am I going to do that this year? Um, but if I had, you know, briefs for that and I knew I can justify the return on investment, I had right. as much traffic as that site. Um, yeah, I can spend twenty thousand dollars this year on content. Let's do it the right way. Yep. You know, that's what we empower, that workflow for someone who you described. And I think it's super interesting just looking at the trends, like even since I've been involved in SEO, you've been involved much longer than I have, but going from a world of like what's this Google thing and how can we essentially game Google, like let's, you know, buy an exact match domain and throw up some articles and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Right. Like that's kind of the old days to that's really gone. Right. It like, I, I love that we're now focusing on truly quality content and market muse, like you said, is in the job of just increasing that quality and just hopefully getting rid of sort of all the spammy. I mean, that's what Google's trying to do anyway. So if you don't get on that bandwagon, like you will be left behind. And I love that. The, the, everybody always points to the exceptions, right? I was saying, right. oh, content is king. Nuh-uh. Look at these. And they'll point to a you know multi-billion dollar corporation. You know, newsflash folks, enterprise SEO plays their own game. Every large, every top 50 enterprise site is black hat. All right. We can have another podcast on yeah, that. Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I mean, they play their own game. Don't set your watch to what, you know, the person that delivers lots of stuff to your house does, right? Um, and you can fill in the blank. I'm not saying who those people are. Um, you might order a lot of stuff from, a, 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 you know, from one company and not another. <laughs> um, but the, don't set your watch on that. Don't set your watch on the biggest publishers in the world. They play a different game, different game. And like you mentioned, it's, you can't do the things they do. You're not, you're not able to, it's just, it, and so, you know, focus on what you can control and the quality you can control. You can guarantee that every article you write is equal to or better than all your competitors every time from the standpoint of quality and comprehensiveness. And I'll tell you what, if you do that and you also create compelling narratives, like creative compelling narratives, mm -hmm. you can't be beaten. You might get beaten by one of these big shops that, you know, work with market views too, <laughs> but I'm sure that's the punchline, right? Um, but the, the, you, that's, that's okay. You know, it's like, that's just part of this game that you're playing. The gaming of the system is not gaming the system. It's that you are in a never ending game of writing amazing content that is a joy for your readers. You're in that never ending game. You're not gaming Google. You know, if you're still right. gaming Google, I mean, you're in trouble right now. And <laughs> it really is one of those, it's one of those laughables. And uh, the time is, your, your, your time is ticking. And, and, you know, that goes whether you're trying to game them on arbitrage, you're trying to game them on pay, you're trying to game them on news, you know, good luck. Right. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> so, uh, Jeff, I've got just two final questions here. And I... I know this is a big question, but, you know, give us a, a, a brief answer here. You know, just thinking about the future of SEO, mm -hmm. you know, where is it going? 
you know, are we really in an industry that is going to be around for a long time? Um, SEO is, is really a relatively young industry. Um, and so if I look 20 years down the road, like, are we going to look back and go like, who was doing SEO? Like, you know, it's funny. It's, I love the question. So I've been 99 is the first time I optimized a website. It's yeah. Right. Um, in 2040, what will it look like? Yeah. Um, I can't go 20 years ahead, but I can go 10 years. Ahead. And I'll give you. Okay. I, I feel very strongly um, that we will have a great consolidation of various economies. Um, we're already starting to see it happen in lead gen. Um, we're starting to see the devolute, the, 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 the breakdown of corporate PBNs basically where these business, the businesses are buying businesses are buying businesses are buying businesses and they're turning into juggernauts that can own great percentages of real estate in the search results. Um, I think that's going to go to a breaking point in four to five years. Uh, that's going to be very difficult for the search engines to overcome. Hmm. Um, I think that's going to, and out of that change will happen. Um, there are search results where in 2005, when, um, Google changed some things that you can't go, it's probably 05 or 07, I'm not sure, changed some things where you can't get um, multiple sites from the same domain, so subdomains, and alter hosts, they can't have multiple listings because there would be search results. Uh, people are so, people are so, uh, you know, you're so spoiled, by the way. The results, <laughs> used to be able to get all 100 results from the same domain, different subdomains. I mean, wow. Yeah, uh, uh, that's the thing. Um, Bing used to have, or MSN used to have paid inclusion in their organic results oh, at that really? time. Yeah, yeah wow. absolutely. True story. Uh, and through their, you know, through their intimate feeds. Um, and so that's going to happen because you're going to have sites all owned by the same conglomerates with all the results on, on, on search results pages. And strategic acquisitions of high authority sites are, oh, that, that ship's been sailing for four years, right? Um, and four years at aggressively, it's gonna continue and Google, they're gonna have to change something. Um, and what is that? I don't know, um, but I do also see the other current is um, uh, they, the quality rater guidelines, um, the, if you don't know what that is, look up Google's quality rating guidelines. Um, the way that they train their quality standards um, isn't heavily feedback based. Um, there are some components, um, the way I can get into how that works, but never on the record. Um, but <laughs> how Google works for those types of things that will have to change too. Um, because the world's becoming more self-aware of there be, you're becoming more of a soul. I feel the world is, you know, becoming a better place and it's going to slow. It's, sometimes it sucks. Sometimes you go down, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it goes up some, you know, depending on, who you are and how you feel. But I think over time, the next generation of people expect greater things from directories and from search engines. And if you think about it, that's what Google's doing. Right. You know, they're starting to give us more and more. They're trying to get to the end of your search journey as quickly as possible. Bad stuff's going to happen by them giving you the end of the journey you didn't want and, right. and in a commercialized way. And we're already starting to see that happen. So I think that getting us to the end of our journey in a commercialized way is going to be at loggerheads with getting us to the end of our journey from organic at the same time that there's consolidation 
and real estate ownership. When those two things happen, there will be a big change in SEO. Super interesting. So something for people to look out for. It probably, I mean, the trend is already happening that you mentioned of um, all these acquisitions, you know, kind of conglomerate conglomerates happening. So for my audience, that can be a great thing, right? You've built an authority site. You can sell to the top bidder. There's, yeah. there's some big money of, of people coming in to buy up search results, essentially, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, so that's a good thing. But uh, number six is worth a whole lot more now if one, in, one two, three, and four are owned by the same conglomerate. Well, that's Think true. Think critically about them. That's interesting. Yeah. Seeing it happen right now. Yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So, but the, the trends of SEO, it's an ever changing, you know, landscape as always, it's hard to predict where it's going to go, but market muse is well positioned, um, to do some really exciting things. Some of which you've shared with us here, um, already, um, my final question, um, did you have a thought? Sorry. No. Okay. <laughs> Great so, question. I haven't thought about that in a long time. <laughs> I love that. So, yeah. Uh, so final, final question here. Are you reading any good books right now? And if you're not at the moment, what's a, what's a good sort of business book or content marketing book or, um, other book that, uh, maybe you can share with the niche pursuits listeners here. I'm reading a book called at the sands at the sands at the Sands, And it's a book about the sands casino in uh, Vegas and how it shaped that industry or shaped that world. Uh-huh. Um, and it's by David Schwartz. And okay. it's really, it's really cool. He's written some amazing books that he's like a, a historian of the gaming industry. Um, so he's written a, you know, a couple of books that relate to that. And I just think he's a great writer. Um, so that's one that I'll, if you have any interest in that, he wrote a book about Jay Sarno as well, which was, if you know who that is, it's, it's a really interesting story. Um, and uh, the book I always keep on me, which is kind of weird, uh, is um, uh, a, a book by, um, I call Outside In Marketing by James Matthewson. Okay. Um, he worked at IBM for years. He's a good friend of mine. He recently passed. So one to check out. Outside in. I haven't read that one. So I'll yeah. have to uh, check that out as really well. Good book. He, um, he was the in-house lead at IBM for okay. a very long time. And also owned the uh, content strategy practice at, um, at a major analyst group. So. All right. So two good book recommendations I'll have to check out and listeners, of course, uh, as well can check out. So, but Jeff, thank you for coming on the show. It's been great catching up and, um, you know, hearing about market Muse and what the latest and greatest is there. Um, any other place that you'd like to send people besides just marketmuse.com? Um, go to marketmuse.com. Also, if you're interested in any of these new offerings, you can shoot me an email, jeff at marketmuse.com. Um, they are all fired in October. Um, but if you want to get on that first list, let me know. Perfect. That sounds good. By the time this episode comes out, it, depending on the timing, maybe they'll, they'll be available. We'll see. So, um, exciting stuff, Jeff, appreciate you coming on talking about artificial intelligence, market muse, content marketing and everything. So thanks again. Appreciate it. Thanks, Spencer.